More Ghost of Tsushima details have been revealed in a couple of interviews with US Gamer, Press Start and Washington Post, all of which I will link in the description if you want to check out the whole articles. We've got information about difficulty, armor sets and a bit more on the exploration side of the game. We'll talk about all of this stuff in this video, so make sure to like, subscribe and hit that notification bell to ensure you don't miss any future Ghost of Tsushima videos. Starting with the exploration details, I talked about some of these aspects in my previous video, along with the size of the map. Sucker Punch have now said that their playtesters would be playing this for six and a half hours a day for five days straight and didn't even finish the main storyline because they kept getting lost in the side missions and exploring the world. So it's clearly a world that we can get completely immersed in. Some other stuff to do in exploration that I didn't mention before was that Jin is able to collect flowers to create dyes that will change the colour of his outfit, find shrines to unlock extra charm slots for an advantage in battles, and collect other items scattered throughout the world to improve his armour and weapons. Some of these items will be in much harder to reach places with some platforming puzzles to get to them. A lot of these areas will need the grappling hook to access, which will only be usable as an exploration tool. It will not be available to use in combat, which is a bit of a shame. I could imagine some great takedowns with that, especially in those stealth situations where you're above the target or something. But sadly not, it will be an exploration tool only. We have some more information regarding the wind as well. We know the wind will direct us towards our next waypoint, but the wind will also be able to direct us towards something specific. In an interview with the Washington Post, Nate Fox said, so if I'm looking for something specific like a collectible or a flower, the wind will point you in the direction of the nearest one, so there is different ways the wind can augment your gameplay. I'm not entirely sure how that's going to work, but my guess is you'll select whatever it is you're looking for from a menu somewhere and it will then guide you towards that item. It sounds like a really good addition given that we're not going to have any map markers or any kind of HUD in the game, so it's going to be really easy to miss a lot of stuff if we don't use this. Moving on next to the armor sets, we know we've got the sets that have already been announced, the samurai set which is focused on combat, and the ghost set which will obviously be focused on a more stealthy approach. We now also know we will have another set available to us focused on exploration, which was the set we saw Jin wearing at the beginning of the State of Play trailer. We don't have any details on the perks or anything like that, but it's good to know that we've got different sets available to us depending on what it is we're going to be doing in the game. There has also been some discussion about the difficulty of the game. In the state of play trailer, the gameplay looked quite easy, but as it turns out, this was one of the studio's QA testers and is one of their best players of the game. So it will most likely be a lot harder than what it looked in that trailer. That said, Nate Fox has also said to the Washington Post that the game is intended to appeal to a very wide group, meaning you can set the difficulty to be not all that challenging, or you can ratchet it up to make it very challenging indeed. The article goes on to explain that you can change the difficulty whilst playing, so if you're having a hard time with a certain enemy or just having a hard time in general, you can make it easier, and vice versa if you're finding the gameplay far too easy, you can make it harder. Fox also goes on to say that he recommends playing the game on a very challenging difficulty if you want to feel the full weight of what it's like to wield that katana. You know those blocks and parries are going to need to be bang on the money if you're going to be playing that way though. We know that Jin will also have technique points that will unlock as you level up, and the devs have now confirmed that we'll be able to apply these towards new abilities in a pretty classic skill tree structure. So I'm thinking Horizon Zero Dawn and Assassin's Creed skill trees here. In an interview with US Gamer, it has also been confirmed that the game world will evolve around us. As your legend grows in the game, the island itself will react to your passing. Citizens will talk about you, become superstitious, scared of you, or thank you for fighting back for them, depending on the choices you make and how you play. Finally, Sucker Punch have confirmed that that black and white grainy gameplay setting is one that we will be able to switch on whenever we want. It's an option available throughout the game, Alongside the colouring, this setting will also change the music and the sound of the wind will be a lot more apparent. But yeah, you'll be able to toggle that on and off whenever the mood strikes. Thanks as ever for watching. If you enjoyed the video, please give it a like and subscribe so you don't miss any future Ghost of Tsushima videos. And I will see you guys again soon.